Welcome students to the online history classes. Today's topic is Dal Khalsa, meaning, origin and significance. Right, now what exactly is Dal Khalsa? Dr. Ganda Singh, an eminent historian of Pines, Dal Khalsa was the army established for the struggle for independence of Punjab. Dr. Hariram Gupta writes, Dal Khalsa was the first organized national army of the Sikh community. Another historian gives a simple explanation to the term Khalsa when he opines that it was a group of men capable to fight against the enemy in the third or the fourth decade of the 18th century. So now, when was the Dal Khalsa founded? What, what actually it brought the newness in, in that kind of political scenario? Now, foundation of Dal Khalsa in 1748 AD was an important event in the Sikh history. Its establishment infused new spirit and confidence into the Sikh community. It enabled the Sikh to boldly face the tyrannies of the Mughals and the Afghans. Due to the effort of Dal Khalsa, the Sikh were able to establish their independent missiles in Punjab. In fact, it goes to the credit of Dal Khalsa <clears throat> that Sikh were able to come out of dark era and entered into an glorious era. So this is how we will start with Dal Khalsa. Its foundation was in 1748. It actually infused a new spirit, confidence in the Sikh community. They were now, they, it, it actually enabled them to boldly face the tyrannies of the Afghans and the Mughals. And a new chapter in the Sikh history was now to begin from the dark era to now a glorious era. Now, why did the Dal Khalsa originate? What was the reason? Why was there a need for a Dal Khalsa? First, the prosecution of the Sikh. Number two, organization of the Buddha Dal and the Taruna Dal. Renewed struggle between the Mughals and the Sikh. Organization of Sikh after the death of Zakaria Khan. Repressive measures adopted by the Mughal governors. Invasions of Ahmad Shah Abdali. Now, first, prosecution of the Sikh. Now, after the death of Banda Singh Bahadur in 1716, the Sikh were left with no able leader to lead them. As a result, the Sikh could not keep themselves united. I had talked about Tat Khalsa and Bandai Khalsa. Now, the difference between the two was that after the death of Banda Singh Bahadur, the Sikh actually... Uh, organized themselves into two different communities. One Tat Khalsa who believed Guru Gobind Singh to be their Guru and Bandai Khalsa who believed Banda Singh Bahadur to be their next Guru. The people of Tat Khalsa, they wore blue colors. The Bandai Khalsa, they wore red colors. Tat Khalsa, they addressed themselves as Vaheguruji Ka Khalsa, Vaheguruji Ki Fateh. Bandai Khalsa addressed themselves as Fateh Dharam and Fateh Darshan. So, now, under such circumstances, when the Sikhs are not united, they do not have any leader after Banda Singh Bahadur, under such condition, the Mughal governors of Punjab, Abu Samad Khan, Zakaria Khan, they prosecuted the Sikh. Awards were announced for the head of the Sikh. The Sikh were arrested and martyred daily at Lahore. They were forced to take shelter in hills and forests. They had to face numerous hardships because at this time they were not united. They were, there was one belonging to Tat Khalsa, there was one belonging to Bandai Khalsa. They were not united. They did not have a leader. So this is where the origin of the Dal Khalsa begins. This is where they could feel that they did not have any leader. And every day the Sikhs were arrested, they were martyred. They had no other way but to take shelter in hills and forests. Under such circumstances, they felt the need to organize themselves into jathas. So they grouped themselves into small jathas. Eventually, these groups or jathas formed the basis of the organization of the Dal Khalsa. Right. Now, the second slide which, which cause I'm talking about is organization of Buddha Dal and Tarunadal. Now, you might have a question in your mind that right now I was talking about Tat Khalsa and Bandai Khalsa. But here I have also want to mention that it was due to the efforts of Bhai Mani Singh in 1721 AD that he united both the Tat Khalsa and the Bandai Khalsa. 
and by this time when he did that the mughal governor at this time was abu samad khan and because of their united they being united they could actually face abu samad khan but of course the prosecution continued and it continued even at the time of zakaria khan the next uh, so uh, the next governor of uh, punjab son of abdul samad khan so first governor general is abu samad khan appointed by the mughal governor farooq siyar now his son zakaria khan becomes the next mughal governor he was also with the same similar mission he wanted to crush the power of the sikh but when he did everything he he actually failed to crush the power of sikh then he felt that let him compromise by sikh in 1733 thus sikh uh, got a golden opportunity to organize their power in 1734 now what was the agreement that was signed between zakaria khan and the sikh he said that one that one of their leader will be given the title of nawab so kapoor singh was given the title of nawab and they will be given a jagir of 1 lakh rupee if they do not enter into any anti mughal activities so by this time nawab kapoor singh who was given nawab a title by the zakaria khan but by this time now he thought that let me organize the sikh into two small jathas now what he did was he organized them into two dals one the buddha dal number two the taruna dal now what is this buddha dal all the sikh above the age of 40 years will be part of this group so all the sikh who are above 40 they will be part of this now what is their function what will they do there their main function will be one to look after the religious places number two to propagate the sikh religion on the other hand the next group that he made was taruna so clear buddha dal 40 years and above main function to look after the religious places and to propagate the sikh religion now taruna dal the sikh below the age of 40 years were recruited now this was so what you can say the younger version of this uh, dal now what was their chief function their chief function was to defend the community and to fight with the enemies taruna dal was now divided into five jathas five groups and each group was placed under an experienced sikh jathedar that means initially taruna dal was to have five subgroups again a little complicated might be for you but let's understand he makes two dal us usne jo hai do dal banaye ek buddha dal ek taruna dal buddha dal mein aapke wo log hain jo 40 years se bade hain right unka main function jo hai define kiya gaya taruna dal jo 40 years se kam hai ab taruna dal mein hi kyunki young population zyada thi to unhone jo hai iske aage panch group bana diye aur panchon group ke apne apne ek sikh jathedar honge har ek jathe ka apna flag aur apna drum hoga right now although nawab kapoor singh was entrusted with the leadership of buddha dal but he acted as a common link between the two dals after having been united into two dals now they were able to intensify their activities against the government just a brief way we started for now we had started with why dal khalsa was formed what were the reasons first is prosecution of the sikh the dal khalsa is the army so why was it formed because after the death of banda singh bahadur they did not have any leader to take the to take up the case of of to give leadership to the sikh community that is how they felt that they must organize themselves into small groups because what they were doing was they were just uh, they were whenever they were uh, arrested or they were martyred they were forced to take shelter in hills and forests right number 2 this area this idea of being organized into group was actually taken into action by nawab kapoor singh in 1734 when zakaria khan because he failed to crush the power of the sikh he compromised with the sikh and he organized these two dals buddha dal and taruna dal and this is how in 1734 nawab kapoor singh because zakaria khan gave him the title of nawab gave gave the sikh community uh, a jagir of 1 lakh per year so 1734 nawab kapoor singh organized these two dal buddha dal and taruna dal
Navtaruna dal because the number was much more greater than the Buddha dal. So this Taruna dal was subdivided into five groups. Each group was placed under an experienced Sikh Jathedar and each group had its own flag and drum. Now, Nawab Kapoor Singh was actually uh, entrusted with the leadership of Buddha, Buddha Dal, but he acted as a common link between the two. Third, now even when Zakaria Khan gave them the opportunity to have peace with the, with the Mughal people, with the Mughal uh, rulers, now because uh, Nawab Kapoor Singh knew that it is it cannot be there, this could be only a temporary respite, a temporary kind of, uh, you know, uh, peace between the them between them so he knew that more or less they have to organize themselves they have to build up the stamina or the strength to face the Mughal onslaught so after organizing their power the Sikh again started creating disturbance in Punjab they again began to plunder the government treasuries this angered Zakaria Khan and in 1735 he confiscated the Jagir which was given to the Sikh Later, now we have already discussed about the Mughal governors. Zakaria Khan martyred Bhai Mani Singh. He martyred Bhai Bhuta Singh, Bhai Mehtab Singh, Bhai Sukha Singh, martyrdom of Bal Hakikat Rai, uh, Bhai Taru Singh. So all these events which were happening right now made the Sikh believe that they need to build up their Dal Khalsa, their army to fight the onslaught of the Mughals. Fourth, now, till Zakaria Khan was there, they were preparing themselves. But after the death of Zakaria Khan, uh, their, the, the war of succession broke out between his two sons. Now, Zakaria Khan had two sons, Yaya Khan and Shah Nawaz Khan. And this, because of the war of succession, it led to lawlessness. Taking advantage of the prevailing condition, the Sikh passed a Gurmatta on 14th October 1745 on the occasion of Diwali at Amritsar. In the Gurmatta, it was decided that 25 Jathas or 25 groups consisting of 100 Sikh should be formed. The leader of every Jatha or a group was to be appointed by virtue of their ability and bravery. These Jathas adopted guerrilla policy to face the Mughals. Gradually, the number of Jathas rose from 25 to 65. So that is clear. So it was only after the death because before the death of Zakaria Khan, they organized themselves into two Dals and uh, then again, there was a renewed struggle between the Mughal and the chiefs. But how uh, Zakaria Khan martyred Bhai Mani Singh, Bhai Muta Singh, Mehtab Singh, Sukha Singh, Balaki Katrai, Bhai Taru Singh, it was clear that the Sikh needed to organize themselves. And when they got the, uh, the uh, actually when they got the, uh, uh, they got the um, idea, they got the, uh, they got the, um, what you can say is um, they got the opportunity. That was the word I was looking for. They got the opportunity to organize themselves. They took that uh, decision. And on 14th October 1745, they passed a Gurmata that 25 groups consisting of 100 Sikh will be formed. And the leader of Jatha will be appointed by the virtue of their ability and bravery. And gradually the number of Jathas arose from 25 to 65. Now, even though the Jathas increased, but the repressive policy of the Mughal governors continued. And now the next Mughal governor was Yahya Khan. The Mughal governors continued the repressive policy and hence weakened the organization of the Sikh. Now, here I will be talking about the um, Ch Chota uh, Kalukara or the smaller Holocaust because all these events were shaping the establishment of the Dal Khalsa. Now, Yaya Khan, after Zakaria Khan, his son, along with Divan Lakhpat Rai, wanted to crush the power of the Sikh. Divan Lakhpat Rai imposed many restrictions on the Sikh. No one could utter the word Guru. Likewise, order the order to use the word poti for grant. Those who defied the orders were sentenced to death. With a view to decimate the Sikh, Yaya Khan and Lakhpat Rai raised a huge army. 
the sikh the army besieged 15000 sikh at kanuvahan the sikh the sikh escaped from there and took shelter in the hills of basoli the mughal forces gave them a hot chase here the sikh were trapped in a difficult situation on one side there were high hills on the other side river ravi was in full spate the mughal soldiers kept on chasing the sikh and along with the moguls even the hill rajas started pursuing them the sikh here were short of food stuffs food stuffs owing to shortage of fodder the horses too were suffering from starvation in this attack 7000 sikh were killed and 3000 were arrested even those who were arrested were butchered mercilessly so this was the occasion which they realized that how much it is important to organize themselves to fight the onslaught of the mughal forces it was the first occasion in sikh history when sikh suffered such a heavy loss of life this incident is referred as the first holocaust or the chota kalukara which took place in 1746 atrocities of the mughal governors were increasing day by day last reason why they formed dal khalsa is the invasion of ahmed shah abdali invasions of ahmed shah abdali provided sikh with much greater impetus to organize themselves you would ask a question why because ahmed shah abdali was involved with the mughal governor mir manu at that time so that means because the mughal governor and ahmed shah was involved in these fights this gave the sikh an opportunity to organize themselves the mughal governor mir manu was involved with ahmed shah abdali in the battle of manupar in which mir manu was victorious but this gave sikh the time to organize themselves so these were the reasons why dal khalsa was formed now when was the dal khalsa formed on 29th march 1748 on the day of basakhi sikh gathered at amritsar nawab kapoor singh suggested that in view of hard times ahead there was a greater need for unity and strength of the punt keeping this view in objective this view keeping in view this objective dal khalsa was organized now we had already talked uh, talked about this that uh, taruna dal which was 5 initially had now increased to 25 from 25 to 65 now it was not very easy to organize the 65 groups or jathas so the 65 jathas were merged into 12 stronger jathas each jatha had its own separate leader and a flag now how was the dal khalsa organized who could become the member of the dal khalsa let's start that now sardar jassa singh alubalia was appointed as the supreme commander of the dal khalsa lots of people write nawab kapoor singh see nawab kapoor singh only established dal khalsa but the supreme commander of dal khalsa was jassa singh alubalia now who could be its member every sikh who had faith in the principles of guru gobind singh ji was considered to be the member of dal khalsa it was expected of every sikh who joined dal khalsa to be expert in both horse riding and use of weapons that anyone anyone can become the member of dal khalsa he only has to believe in the principles of guru gobind singh ji but he has to be an expert in both horse riding and use of weapon every member of dal khalsa was at full liberty to join any jatha he could he could even you know leave one jatha and uh, become part of another jatha so there was a full democratic uh, element in in dal khalsa now the other question which comes to our mind is then how, what what would they be doing if they have a common enemy suppose ahmed shah abdali invades on them so how would they fight now at the time of the war one of the 12 sardar was selected as the chief of the dal khalsa and other sardars compiled with this order now one must wonder that was there any institution to execute what these decisions were done no there was no institution to execute why now the meeting of the sarbat khalsa that is the entire sikh community was held every year on the occasion of baisakhi and diwali at amritsar sarbat khalsa meant the whole sikh sangat 
in this meeting gurmattas on matters of vital importance were passed in the presence of the guru granth sahib so when we say guru matta it means the advice in the presence of the guru so because it had the presence of guru granth sahib it had the seal of guru granth sahib there, there was no need for a mechanism to execute the orders because the sikh considered their duty to abide by the gurmatas so these are some of the important elements any person any sikh who had faith in the principles of guru gobind singh ji could become the member of dal khalsa he was to be an expert in horse riding and use of weapons every member was at full liberty to join any jatha at the time of the war any of the 12 sardar was to be selected as the chief and the other sardar compiled how the decision was taken the sarbat khalsa which meant the whole singh sangat would get together on the occasion of basakhi and diwali at amritsar the decisions would be taken on important matters they were called as the gurmatas because those decisions were taken in the presence of guru granth sahib because guru granth sahib was very much uh, sacred for the sikh so there was no need to execute the order they the sikh thought it as their duty to abide by these gurmatas now the last part of this answer would be the features of the military system now we have talked about why dal khalsa was formed we have talked about that what were the principles how could one be a member of dal khalsa now once you are the member of dal khalsa what are the features of the military system under that under this we will be talking about six subheadings cavalry infantry absence of artillery recruitment and discipline salary and the mode of fighting so first is cavalry cavalry was an important organ of the army of dal khalsa in fact we had studied the very first condition to join dal khalsa was that he should be a good horse riding and must know about the uh, artillery as well then the horses were well trained they could cover a distance between 50 to 100 miles in a single day then is infantry now infantry was least important now when i will discuss uh, ranjit singh for the next semester you will understand that it was only ranjit singh who actually made infantry equally important but till then uh infantry jise hum hindi mein kahenge paidal sena that was not important in dal khalsa because their function was only limited to guarding or keep watching on these uh, important uh, monuments or important things the sikh did not consider it worthwhile to join this wing of the army and it is only under ranjit singh you will find that infantry will be uh, will be taken up as in to make it as the a uh, most capable part of the sikh army like absence of artillery in the battle the sikh used swords spears khandas bows arrows but guns were not that much in number for the lack of ammunition guns were scarcely used but they did use the dhals or the shields to cover against the attack from the sword now something about the recruitment and the discipline now there were no fixed rules for recruitment in the dal khalsa um, if i just would take any liberty there was no there's there was no nda exam or any entrance to be a part of this uh, um, this army in fact every sikh was free to join any jatha of the dal khalsa they could even leave any jatha they could join any new one no written record of the name or the salaries of the soldier was maintained there was no arrangement for their training either now the question might come to our mind that if they were not trained how did they function maybe it was the religious fervor that that kept them together it was the atrocities of the moguls that kept them together so this was the reason why and the gurmattas the all the decisions were taken in front of the guru granth sahib so this all gave the binding uh, spirit to these uh, sikh in spite of all these shortcoming there was discipline in the rank and file of dal khalsa historians believe that since the decisions were passed by gurmatta obedience to which was considered their sacred duty of every sikh the sikh would fight with the religious fervor now the salary 
the soldiers of Dar Khalsa were not paid any regular pay. So what were they paid? They were just given the share of booty. So later the system of giving them jagirs also started. But yes, this was true that if a soldier was wounded, he was given compensation. But some kind of a regular pay that was not given during your uh, during Dar Khalsa. Now, what was the mode of fighting? We've talked about what kind of, they fought with swords, the bows and arrows, their ammunition was uh, limited, uh, infant, uh, cavalry was more important, infantry wasn't. So what was their mode of fighting? Now, the most important uh, characteristic was the mode of fighting. They adopted guerrilla tactics. That is, they would just give a surprise attack and then they would hide, they would give a surprise attack. This is how they would fight. Now, several reasons have, uh, have been given for this, that why Sikh had to adopt this system. Now, firstly, in the Gurdas Nanga battle, Banda Bahadur and hundreds of Sikh were taken prisoners who were later killed mercilessly. So, Sikh learned a lesson that open confrontation with the Mughal army could prove harmful. So, guerrilla tactics could be one way of handling the onslaught of the Mughal army. Secondly, the Sikh had no other way to face the prosecutions of Abu Samad Khan, Yahya Khan, Mir Manu, Zakaria Khan. Moreover, the Sikh had limited resources as compared to Mughals. So in these prevailing circumstances, guerrilla warfare proved very helpful for the rise of the Sikh power. The Sikh used to fall upon the enemies and inflict heavy losses on them. By the time the enemy used to get alert, the Sikh would escape hurriedly into their hideouts in forests and hills. It was due to this mode of fighting that Sikh were able to challenge the Mughals as well as the Afghans. So this is all about uh, Dal Khalsa. We have talked about why Dal Khalsa was formed. We have talked about that what were the, uh, how could one become the member of Dal Khalsa? Then what were the military features of Dal Khalsa? So this brings us end to this um, uh, video on Dal Khalsa. But we, we have to remember that before the missiles come into existence, Dal Khalsa was one of the most important political event in the 18th century. And we, when we talk about the emergence of new rulers, in that we, the foundation was laid by Dal Khalsa, the missiles. And one more thing, missiles did not come in one go. Now here we say that Dal Khalsa was formed in on one specific day, 29th of March, 1748. But it was not in case of the missiles. Missiles came gradually. So if we talk about the missiles, the ground was prepared by Dal Khalsa. So Dal Khalsa was one of the most important um, events in the history of uh, Sikh, uh, in the history of Sikh, in the rise of the Sikh power. So this is an important question and I would again request you to go through the slides one or two times, then go back to your books. A lot of people, a lot of students just ask me that what am I saying in my slide is not in their books. It is not true. Uh, when I choose my slides, whatever I write, I make sure that majority of the history books are talking about it. So I'm sure maybe that particular point has been mixed up with your point in your book. So you may read both the book and my slides and I, I, I think you will able to understand the topic quite clearly. And once you understand, please go back to the, the set of questions I've given you. Try to see if you are able to answer those questions. My next uh, video will be on the missiles. And I suppose this will be the last video for the students of semester four, BA semester four. So again, thank you so much for watching this video. Any kind of comments, please Put your comments, negative, positive, in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to uh, hear your comments. And if you have any queries, please do uh, let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer all your queries. So thank you so much. See you once again with a new video on missiles. And that probably will be my last video for BA semester 4.